So I'm not sure what's going on, but anyway, I'm going to start talking. <laughs> I'm Amira Hall, and today I'm inspired uh, by my guides to share a little bit about dying, the fear of dying, death, maybe what happens on the other side, and manifesting. I know that seems to be a disconnect somehow, but I was tuning in to my guides, the guardians of the light codes, and looking for some direction on what they want me to talk about today. And what I got was a stream of information about how the manifesting on our planet is shifting. And you may have noticed that some of the things that you've been doing in the past don't work anymore. Um, working harder, 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 trying to get ahead or trying to get the promotion or trying to, you know, make a relationship work, whatever it might be in your life, whatever you're putting so much effort into, you know, it's changing. And it's funny because I came across a brief email and I didn't go into it too much, but the highlights of the video was, or the message was that, you know, vision boards and pendulums and all of these props aren't enough. And or visualizing and affirmations, it's not enough. And the one thing I remember when the secret came out for me, I was so excited. They did a fantastic marketing job in breaking loose this message and sharing it with so many people. So many people woke up and said, oh, yeah, I want to manifest. And, oh, it's that cool and that easy. Well, the truth of it is we're all manifesting all the time. The trouble is with their formula or what they presented at the time was they were leaving out a key ingredient. And that key ingredient has to do with how you feel, your vibration, your frequency at the core. So you can change your thoughts and see this is the problem why it doesn't work for a lot of people is because they think, they think, and they think too much. And they think that if they just keep repeating an affirmation and having a vision board and continually focusing on it, it will manifest. Some of it happens over time. But the big downside of all of that is that you're using your head and you're using your emotions, but you're not getting to the core of what is generating sort of like the archive or let's say the hidden software that's generating your ability to manifest. So I was pondering all of that. And of course, this is the sort of the foundation of everything I've been teaching for 25 years, much of what I learned in my near death experience. So that was in 1998. So when the secret was launched, I went, okay, this is super exciting. However, there's some missing components. And that's the part of where we're stepping into now, because the guardians of the light codes explain to me that there's like this grid like vibration that we basically are part of that is let's call it a realm let's call it a dimension of manifestation and it looked like a spider web or a net that we literally are plugged into but they're showing me they started showing me how that net is spinning spinning and it's changing there's a vortex of energy that's being generated and because all of the pieces of the net or the net is almost like instantaneously recreating itself in a whole new way in other words the programming of our manifesting dimension is shifting and that's why we're experiencing so much chaos in everything around us, so much change. And some of the methods or the techniques that we used to use are no longer working or not as effective. So we're being pushed, we're being squeezed like through a toothpaste tube um, out into this whole new realm. And we're all flailing around trying to figure it out. And, you know, we're still... I'm going to say selfish. We want what we want. And why shouldn't we, right? We are here as creators. We are here to manifest what we want, but how do we get it? So now it's more about being in this place of 
Some of it is surrender. Some of it is the word grace, perhaps. Letting go of your grip on the steering wheel of trying to control things and how to do that. And letting go of what you don't know is there. What you don't know, you don't know, right? And so we're being reformatted and we have to let go of our need to control and our fear of dying, our fear of not surviving, our fear of not knowing how to do it. And that's where our ego and our beliefs and our thoughts are trying to override everything that we cannot stop. It's like a tsunami. It's way beyond our comprehension. And spirit always steps down these messages for me so that I can comprehend it in my limited way, okay? So this massive upheaval, the changes in every aspect of our life that many mystics and, and visionaries have been talking about for a very long time, I've been experiencing it for a very long time. I mean, in 2009, I participated in a book called Transforming Through 2012 and Beyond. And my little chapter in there was... Um, recalling a vision that I had in Egypt. And I was meditating when my being, a uh, being, uh, my guide or a guide showed up behind me. It was like an egg shaped light, um, iridescent kind of presence. And I didn't have to look, I couldn't see anything. If I looked, I, I just knew it was there. It's just like, you know, when your mom comes up behind you, you just know it's mom's energy. It was like that. And I asked my guide, I said, what is this thing, 2012? What is this great big shift? And you know, there's a lot of people and a lot of books and you can read all about it. I wanted my own information. I wanted sort of something tangible that I could hold on to. Not that their answer was tangible, but their message was this. Imagine today you're a caterpillar and tomorrow you're a butterfly. And, you know, I ponder that and ponder that and ponder that and wonder what it's like to be crawling around on a branch and just munching on greens. And then all of a sudden being in this lockdown kind of chaos or in this space we call the cocoon of reinventing ourselves, right? And I think that there's so many of us going through exactly that, reinventing ourselves. And it's incremental, you know? And so I then becoming a butterfly and having access, just flittering away and flying on the, you know, wind currents and, and the flowers, the bright colors, the uniqueness of everything around us, it just becomes so vibrant, right? But then my guide said to me, and beware, there will be many charlatans among you. And honestly, that made me take notice. Yes, I continue to ponder what it's like to be a butterfly in the garden. And that's where we're at, right? We're in, the, some of us are in that cocoon. Some of us are still crawling along, you know, at a snail's pace. But we're not here to judge that. All I know is I'm in the garden. I'm looking for other butterflies and flowers to explore and to experience. So in this time period of so much change and not knowing where I'm going. I mean, I don't, I'm supposed to know, right? I'm the psychic. But anyway, it's not knowing what's ahead of us, putting one foot in front of the other, being able to be grounded in that space. Well, how do you say that a butterfly can be grounded? Well, that's a great question. It's not about holding down the butterfly it's it's about a presence it's about a beingness it's about being in alignment and then that's a frequency that we send out and that is what loops around into our ability to manifest and so manifesting is what we're here to do now in in conjunction with that you know I was talking to a friend earlier and she's really in the throes of helping both her parents who are both elderly and both sick and um, working on being at long distance from the Northeast down to the Southeast. And so we've got a logistic issue. We've got dietary concerns. We've got one that's in bed, bedridden, got financial concerns. There's so many factors that she's dealing with, but, but the bottom line is she's fighting for her dad who doesn't want to die or who is afraid of dying. And having had a near death experience, I know 
it's the greatest place. It's the wondrous part of who we are and where we get to go when we're, we're done this, this gig. But, you know, our need to keep our loved ones around can also be a fighting force for us. And I remember I shared with her that I went to this group of ladies speaking. It's called Story Sisters. And there was a beautiful woman that came in and we had a we had a rainstorm and ice storm basically last couple weeks last week. And this particular lay lot of 85,000 people were without power, without water, without everything. So here's this woman and she comes up and she's of Indian descent and she puts on this beautiful music and she starts talking and she said, I've got stage four cancer. And she had this massive lump on her head and it's affecting her brain. And she said, I have had three near death experiences. And all she talked about was her gratitude and feeling such peace. And when we spoke after, I realized, you know, this is not a woman that is fighting. Why? Because she accepts it now. She's at a stage of surrendering, taking her grip off the wheel, loosening her grip and recognizing the wondrous part of all that. And so on one hand, she's completely at peace with her next step and what she's manifesting to get to the other side. And whereas my friend's father, who is totally a fear, afraid of dying, and even though you know, there's been many discussions about it, you know, he's hanging on for dear life. So whether it, whether an, a career of yours is dying, or whether you've experienced the, the passing of a loved one, we don't die, we don't die. And so it's all of us, I guess you could say parts of us die, don't they parts of us cease to exist. And I know in this massive change and how we're the manifesting grid is literally shifting it's requiring us to let go parts of ourselves or what we thought and who we are and so that's where i want to leave you today is the beauty of of that loosening the grip on the steering wheel as a surrendering and you know i've been challenging myself challenging myself to come live five days a week challenging myself to do things different and that's just bringing up all these incredible opportunities. So is that the cocoon space or are we pushing ourselves out of the cocoon to fly and experience something completely different? So with the notion of dying, aspects of us are dying. Those of us around us are leaving this world. Souls are many are leaving. And so we have an opportunity, even as we witness their expiration as a physical body we get to choose how are we living are we growing are we expanding are we absolutely living full technicolor high definition whatever that might be and so that's where i want to leave it today just with hopefully some inspiration for you to just check in with yourself and what is it that you're hanging on for dear life what is it that what how is that fear blocking or limiting you from creating some miracles or having a, an incredible magical experience. So have a blessed day.